From the end of the Kaiser's War, Winnington was interested in high pressure, up to about 4,000 pounds per square inch for ammonia synthesis. So, when the time came to discuss a new research program at Winnington, after the formation of ICI, high pressure was one of the lines suggested. Well, the board has agreed that part of our budget can be spent on what they are pleased to call speculative research. What price high pressure? Well, that's really Billingham's job now, you know. No, really high pressure. One, two, three thousand atmospheres. You know we can't make man-sized apparatus which will stand such pressures. Perhaps our Dutch friends can help us there, eh, Doctor? A compressor to 3,000 atmospheres. Yeah, it is a problem to which I have devoted much thinking. And now I have an idea. Look, here I have drawn the familiar cylinder. So, now with mercury pistons, we can... And so the study of the behavior of substances under very high pressures began. Experiments using ethylene gas were carried out. The research team were exploring new, perhaps dangerous territory. As a result of one of the early experiments, it was reported on the 27th of March, 1933, that a white waxy substance had been found in the reaction tube. Analysis proved little. Perhaps it was a polymer of ethylene, hundreds of ethylene molecules linked together in a chain. No one was sure. Further experiments were made, but not all were successful. Ethylene was declared unsafe, and further experiments were postponed until more suitable apparatus was ready. Two years passed before the work was resumed with new apparatus built into compartments with blast walls and steel doors, which reduced the risk to a minimum. larger quantities of the new material were produced. Then it was found the white substance, when formed into threads, would cold draw, and it was decided that it must be a very high polymer of ethylene. Research forged ahead, but for months the polymer remained a curiosity, until it was pointed out that the electrical and mechanical properties of polythene were similar to, or even better, than those of gutta percha. Till then, the best insulation for underwater telegraph cables. As there seemed to be a number of commercial outlets for the new product, a method of producing it continuously and in large quantities had to be devised. So a pilot plant was built, and we began to learn more and more about the reaction and how to control large-scale production. Tests by the Post Office and by Submarine Cables Limited for high-frequency cable proved most successful and a firm order for 150 tons of polythene was placed. Faith in the future of polythene had been justified, and a large-scale plant was put under construction, which was formally handed over to the works as a production unit on the day that Hitler invaded Poland. Not a moment too soon. For polythene played an indispensable part in the air, sea, and land victories made possible by radar. <laughs> 